In the words of the late George Carlin, BS is the glue that binds us together as a nation. Here comes a ton of it. It's time for BSN with Big Nate. That was prowess with all downhill right here on BS with Big Nate. And as, as you probably learned by now, usually uh, we'll come out of a track and then we will talk to the band that performed the track today. This is actually a uh, BS with Big Nate first. I've got the entire band joining me on this one. So uh, a lot of fun. And, sober. and you got us sober, my dude. For the, For the most part. We'll see if we can fix that. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and introduce yourself, fellas. That way they know what you do. My name, my name's Kenny Mange. I play bass. Brandon Chen, I play drums. Curly, I play guitar. I'm Dalton, and I sing. And Scott, and I play guitar. Don't play guitar. So you guys hail out of North Carolina, the Charlotte area. We'll go ahead. We were talking a little bit about that before we got kicked off here. 
But what I want to know is, how did Prowess come together? How did you guys get your start? Whew, man, that's a long and winding road. Yeah. Um, especially out these years now. Just, just the, the commonality of, of our taste. There's not a whole lot of cats around here to play classic rock anymore and just, you know, stumbling upon each other, I guess, is the, is the best way to the best way to put it it's been a several years long process to get here <laughs> and let, let's talk about here earlier this week you guys dropped a video for 2020 has honestly been a great year for prowess uh for, from a musical standpoint because you dropped your video earlier this week for all downhill at the beginning of the year uh blacktop therapy came out and you also uh ended up getting involved with Amox publishing yeah. Right. So I want to go ahead and ask a little bit about each part of that. But we'll start at the beginning of the year with Blacktop Therapy. Uh, what's going on with that? I know in the middle of the year you kind of switched publishing. How, how does that work out from, from a logistics standpoint? Right. Uh, somebody want to take the first, first half of that? Um, well, as far as um, we put it out, it would... I guess technically kind of be like our first uh, release under the label, even though it come out in January and we didn't come up to our deal till now, which is the end of June. So, um, not are you, exactly ta are you sure. talking about the, the, the album in general, putting the album out? Um, oh. yeah. Yeah. Well, putting it out has been really good. Cause this, it gave us opportunity. We hadn't had a chance to do a full album. And, um, ever since we kind of had this inclination of the band, everybody, Everybody's really been a lot more like-minded than a lot of the people we've ever had to deal with. And a lot of it come out in the music. That's why all of us, you know, stand by that album 100%. And it definitely not only gave our fans what they were looking for, because they knew that's what we were capable of, a really raw rock and roll album, which is what it is at the end of the day, you know. Um, but we put it out, and ever since it's come out, a lot of people, and, you know, it's gained us a lot of fans so far, and it's, you know, barely five, six months old, you know, with the coronavirus thing going on and all that. Um, you know, a lot of people are sitting at home listening to music, streaming new bands and stuff, and that's been getting us an outstanding amount of exposure. So when we finally do get to go out and get, do some shows, which probably be sometime in the fall, we'll uh, have a lot more people coming out to show a lot of new faces, you know? Yeah. So, and we can't, we couldn't be more grateful for that because new faces, you know, in a town where you know everybody and everybody knows you, it's always a good thing, especially when traveling. <laughs> so you put that album out in January and... Kind of, I, I mean, from your perspective, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of inferring here. All right, we got this album. We're going to get out. We're going to play some kick-ass shows. What does that feel like? You know, you kind of just get underway with the beginning of the year. You have several dates, January, February, and then March hits. Like, what does that do to you guys from a creative standpoint? Uh, we dried the water and hold up, simply enough. I mean, we've all been basically on vacation ever since. You know, and we're planning on making our actual return in the fall. We wanted to wait and, uh, you know, let everything run its course and whatnot and not try to get back out too early, you know, because you don't want to go off half cock. So we decided we would just wait till the fall time. And we've been rehearsing, you know, and still hanging out, you know, doing our thing as we usually would. But we definitely already started writing some new stuff for the follow up as of last week, as a matter of fact. We've been so, using this uh, quarantine as a, as a time for us to get together and hone in on things we're doing us a lot of a lot of songs we've written and not really quite had time to focus on and everything like that so we're hammering those out so we can get down with tuck and pre-produce pre -produ pre these things and um it's been more of a, a we've been using it straight as work more than vacation honestly <laughs> right. well yeah it's a little bit of both though i, I switched to a different type of cigarette so that's good <laughs> I, I like that mentality that, you know, you guys just put that album out. I mean, with it, it's, what, six months old by this point, and, and you're already working, thinking ahead, looking forward. You said you're you're planning to come back in the fall. Do we have any concrete dates or anything lined up yet? Yeah, yeah. We've got uh, the first date that we've got on the calendar. Um, well, we have a we have a, a local date with um, I think it, it's at a local venue with uh, Save and Able or something like that. But I'm 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 that was booked probably three, four, five, six months before the coronavirus thing, and I doubt it'll hold up. Um, and so we're not counting on that to hold up. Our first real date is uh, Thursday, September third. We're playing at the uh, the M three Festival pre party, yeah. and the M pre party um, in in 
Columbia, Maryland. It usually sells out every year. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so we're off. pumped yeah. with that. We've actually we got a power weekend booked that weekend. We've got that show on Thursday. Saturday, we're booked up in Saginaw, Michigan at a place called The Vault. It's like a 1300 cap room called The Vault in Michigan. And that's been one of our bigger markets. So uh, we feel like we're just coming off a show at uh, the machine shop in Flint. It was fucking sold out. We weren't the headliners. Yeah. Uh, we were actually uh, supporting a, a local band there, but uh, it was a it was a sold out. Last time we were there, we played to a sold out show there in Michigan, and uh, I don't know what we're going to do at the vault. And then in between, I think we're going to um, we're we're going to it's not in stone yet, but I think we're going to do something in in Columbus, Ohio, on the way from Maryland to Michigan with uh, our friends who were formerly Black Coffee. Uh, they're called South of Eden now, and they just got uh, they got picked up by Lava Records, which is Greta Van Fleet's label, and uh, they've been kind of going through a brand and rechange you know branding rebranding and everything getting the new getting the new wow. tunes ready and they're about to announce coming out and putting you know they putting you know getting back out on the map since they had shut things down as black coffee and uh so we're hoping to jump on something with them in columbus that'll be a huge i mean it isn't a tour but it's a huge weekend we should see you know hundreds if not thousands of people over those three days you know and that's a hell of a way to come back out of the gate i think if it all holds up you know yeah, hit the ground running, definitely, for sure. That's definitely what that'll be. That's what I like to hear. And you guys kind of closed it out with with everything. When everything kicked off, you had shot your show in January for, for the video that you guys released earlier this week for All Downhill. But, I mean, even throughout it, you guys were kind of trying to stay busy. Like, uh, back in April, you had a video with uh, Live from Club Fungus. How'd that end up coming about? Um, we, we got an offer from, we got an inquiry from new wave of classic rock about, uh, they were putting together a web fest and, uh, we've had a kind of a pretty good relationship with them. They actually debuted the video earlier this week, the, the all downhill video that actually debuted on the new wave of classic rock, uh, Facebook page. And they, you know, they've got that, they've got a closed group that's got like 20,000 members and some really some, you know, a lot of fans that like you know up and coming bands that have that classic rock sound or a part of that group it's been it's been pretty big for us but they they said that they were doing a web fest and we wanted to get involved in it and so we needed a place to film it that we could you know we had the lockdown shit going on the covid shit we couldn't have a big crew and we couldn't be someplace that had an audience so we uh you know we got hooked up with the guys at club fungus and scott sq from black t-shirt productions um you know, offered us his room and we came up there with uh, Will Moss from Hive Minds Media and shot a shot a video there just basically off the cuff. We we went through a set that we played four or five songs and yeah, we did like it like we did it three times back yeah. to back because there was actually bands there after yeah, us there filming more, their man, shit. So, you know, we're trying not to hold them up um, and we carry a lot of shit, you know what I mean? So we had to get it in, get it done, get the fuck off. And then, uh, you know, edit it after the fact uh, over the, over a couple of days and tweak the audio a little bit. So, uh, you know, so it sounded so it sounded at least somewhat decent. We couldn't do a whole bunch of production to it. Um, but you it know, did serve yeah. its purpose without yeah. a doubt because that was, you know, like that video definitely summed up how we are live. We were a little bit in closer quarters, though, because most of the stages we were on a little bit bigger. That was like poster stamp level stage. <laughs> so we were all kind of having to smell each other and stuff. But uh, yeah. but that was a really good placeholder that we were able to use. And it racked us up. Of views even a lot overseas because yeah. a lot of people that was their first time seeing us yeah you know a yeah. lot of our hardcore fans saw it and were just like yep this is the this is the prowls this is the prowls right here it plain is, and simple and then a lot of new people saw it and they were just shell shocked by it like they didn't know what to say it's so. just really hard to pull off you know there's no crowd there's nobody in the room except for the people that you know except for the guy filming it and the guy running sound you know uh so it's kind of hard to pull the energy that you would get live and i think we're also mostly sober which uh you know for most bands you know that's a positive for us you know there's a chemical element to our rock and roll you know uh so but we you know we we had a good time and it, and it yeah. showed us it showed a real raw rock and roll band i mean it isn't a fucking perfect performance from any of us but you know what is perfect in rock and roll you know this is true yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it those are the tracks from the you know we didn't retract anything we didn't uh you know we didn't any. we didn't overdub anything that's a, you know those are our tracks straight from the from the take you know yeah and i i think that was my introduction to prowess actually and, and i definitely think there was something that was extremely captivating about it and i'm loving with everything going 
going on, everything kind of being closed, people still hedging their bets on, on going out. I've really enjoyed seeing bands kind of take that digital avenue. And I think you guys did a, a fantastic job and have been keeping it up with, uh, with social media as well. Um, I do have to ask on a little unrelated note, you say there's a chemical element, so I, I need to know what everyone's drink of choice is. Well, that's Curly's drink of choice. Cheap rum, that's Cheap Maine's rum. drink yeah, of choice. Yeah. I think yeah. he drinks Coors, Coors Light, yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, rum, really, that's my only, when I really drink, I drink rum. And I drink. A few things we get along on. I drink vodka most almost exclusively now. I don't even really drink beer anymore. Just... Christmas is coming up. If you want to know yeah. what to get me, <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong with a little Jack. All right, where can they find prowess on the web? Everywhere, everywhere. Wherever Spotify, you look for music, YouTube, man, there. all the uh, prowess dot rocks. You just set an alarm off. Yeah, he did. Oh, our alarm. <laughs> you find us at prowess dot rocks on Facebook. Just wait till that ends. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? Lord bless it, child. Sorry, man. Somebody tried to steal the van. Again. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we just got rid of an old RV that uh, our claim to fame when we were early, you know, when we were early in Prowess's game is that uh, it got stolen with, with a couple of motherfuckers in it, and we ended up tracking the dude down, and we went live on Facebook when we pulled him out and helped, helped him to the ground. And uh, so that was like our most popular video for a while. And so everybody makes a joke. Don't get your don't get your new vehicle stolen. And uh, I just left <laughs> Keith on the ignition. It was beeping and shit. So <laughs> well, yeah, I love it. Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, YouTube. And you can also find some of the tunes through Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. All right. And as far as black top therapy, where uh there are a lot of us who uh, prefer physical copies. Where can we pick those up at? Mainly at the shows, because we always have them stacked up at the shows. So when we finally do start playing live, you can pick it up there. Or um, we have an online web store. You can get it from there, too. Brown but, Star Rocks. Yep. Um, but we only currently have the CDs. I don't think we're going to do a vinyl or anything like that. We talked about it, but it probably won't happen. Yeah, it's just cost prohibitive right now. I mean, you know. We're already, we're already get, we've already got time booked to go down and work on the follow-up. You know, we've probably got... We probably got another six month cycle of of black top therapy before we got to start working in new stuff. And if the demand's there, you know, I mean, we have moved a fuckload of albums for yeah. a, for a DIY band. I mean, I'm not for exaggerating first, there. Uh, album, yeah, too. it's it, I, you know, mm -hmm. this is that's our first real album, and we have sold plenty of fucking records, and that more than more than we probably expected. We ain't fucking rich or anything, but you know, people are definitely coming to check it out. Um, but, you know, we're getting ready to move on, start getting ready to work on the next one. We don't want to get bored, you know. I like it. I am joined today by Prowess. Give them some love on Facebook, Twitter. Check them out on Spotify. And uh, listen to Black Top Therapy. Because, uh, also, all the touch tunes, BMI, AMI radio. You can find us on any bar that has one of these internet ra internet jukeboxes also. That's a good point. I, I, I did not know that. That's yeah, some killer yeah. stuff. Give it a listen. Little bar and prove people wrong with that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I hear it all the time. Yeah, bar. all the time. <laughs> but if we're at your bar, don't play our fucking songs. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's cool and all, but it's there's nothing like we're trying to have a conversation to be cool, and somebody just starts blasting yeah, one of our songs the through the fucking yeah. jukebox, and it's yeah. like there's no cool way there's to people, handle that. There there's no that, fucking yeah. cool way for that to start happening, and you feel normal. There's, right. It doesn't fucking feel normal. It feels weird as fuck, yeah. honestly. <laughs> no, I, I get it. Like if I walk into a store and I hear myself on the radio in the store, it's. I imagine, nope. yeah. I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Uh, you guys have a lovely day. Everyone, give Prowess some love. Right on. Woo! Thank you. Thank you.